This video focuses on parent functions and transformations. Here's our example. We have g of x equals x squared minus 5. And we want to graph this function. So first thing we want to do is identify what is the parent function. And the parent function is a quadratic function. It's a parabola when we graph it. So the equation for a quadratic is y equals x squared. Um, the next thing we want to do is identify what is the translation or translations that exist in this problem. So we notice there is a minus 5 outside the function. So if we go back to a previous slide in our notes, when we have inside the function, which that's not this one, it's going to be a horizontal shift. What we have instead is a outside the function, and notice if it's a plus k, it's going to move up, and we add k to all of our y values. If it's a minus k, we're going to shift down and subtract k from the y coordinates. All right, so let's go back to our example here. Notice this is a minus 5, so we have a subtraction of k. So how we move our from its parent function is we're going to subtract y or 5 from all of the y values. So to write our rule, we have to describe it first. So we're going to be moving down 5 units on the y axis. And our rule, we are not changing the horizontal axis values, so that x will stay as it is. But then for us to move down 5 units, we have to subtract 5 from all of our y values. All right, so we're going to just go back and graph the parent function first. So this first t chart is just for the parent, y equals x squared. So we have our x and we have our y. We've already graphed our quadratic parent function, function in a prior video. So we substitute 0 in for um, x and we get to the 0. Substitute 1 in for x, so 1 times 1 is 1. Substitute 2 in for x, 2 times 2 is 4. Now let's use a couple negative numbers, negative 1 and negative 2. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So let's go out and graph that. So 0, 0 is our origin. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. Negative 1, up 1. Negative 2, up 4. So here is our parent function. Let's label that. y equals x squared. All right. Now we're going to write the ordered pairs for the new function, the g of x function. So we're going to use the rule up above. So here's our x. It's going to stay as it is. And all the y's, we're going to subtract 5. And this table will include y equals x squared minus 5. All right. So all of our x's are going to stay the same. We're not moving it left or right at all. So 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Now our y's, we're adjusting them down 5 units. So we have to subtract 5 from here, subtract 5 from here, subtract 5 from here, and we continue doing that. So, so we'll start back. 0 minus 5. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 1 minus 5, negative 4. 4 minus 5, negative 1. 1 minus 5, negative 4. 4 minus 5, negative 1. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this now. So we're going to graph these ordered pairs. So here's our first order pair, over 0, down 5. Next order pair, over 1, down 4. Next order pair, over 2, down 1. Next order pair, negative 1, negative 4. Last order pair, negative 2, negative 1. All right, so we should see in our new function, this is our g of x function, that when we look at its parent in the blue, <clears throat> that each of those five ordered pairs should be shifted down five units. All right, to finish up this problem, we need to identify the domain and the range. The domain, what type of numbers can you plug in for x? 
Well, all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Now our range of values, we give ourselves a horizontal line here at y equals negative 5. Everything above that horizontal line, the imaginary line, exists. So our range of values is y greater than or equal to negative 5. Everything above this yellow line exists for our range, our 